Pasek, a fly fish fanatic, and welcome to my tying bench. Uh, today I'll be tying a uh, Stillwater staple, the dragonfly. Um, this is a, uh, a pattern that I've been tying for many, many years. Uh, I've actually switched up the uh, the, uh, the the body material um, in the, probably the last six months or so um, because I really like this material that I found. Uh, found. It's readily available. I picked this stuff up at Michael and Young's Fly Shop down in uh, in uh, Surrey, um, and uh, it really makes a super nice, uh, super nice body. So uh, here, I'll just put the fly into the vise that we're going to be tying, and then I'll switch over for you guys. Um, I used to just tie it with a regular chenille body, but this stuff is awesome. So that's what we'll be tying right there. Okay, and this stuff is nice and supple and lots of movement in it. It's got a little bit of sparkle. Um, so what it is, this material, it's, uh, so you can see, hopefully you can see that whale's back. And it's uh, the MC Agate in the Imp Green for the body. I tie a lot of uh, blobs with the Sunset, I think it's called, Sunny, Sunny Pink. So the blobs, and then there's this one as well that I really like. It's the orange uh, sorbet. So again, right for blobs, and, and it, it's made for egg patterns, eh? But it works really well for for blobs and for boobies and for for stuff like that. And I really like how it uh, how it comes together for this. And when this gets wet, it gets a little thinner. Um, and you can, if you want, you can tie this a little tighter and make it more gomphus style, so a little bit fatter, or you can tie it a little looser. And then when it gets wet, it skinnies out, it skinnies down, and then it looks more like a, a darner, right? So, okay, so that's obviously, that's going to be the body, the uh, the um, thorax section. I'm going to be using some Arizona Semi-Seal and Peacock. Uh, I'll be using some uh, Zemperfly Nano Silk in, in a white or in a gray. It, it, I'm going to paint the, uh, the head anyway. And then uh, some pheasant tail. And then I'll use a little bit of... Uh, the golf thinman um, at the end for the for the for the uh, shell back there. So, okay. Um, for the hook, I'm using a Hens BL354 in a size eight. Uh, it's a barbless hook. These Hens hooks, in my opinion, are some of the best hooks out in the market. Um, these and like the, these are as good, if not better, than in my opinion, than the Hanics. Um, they are super sharp. This tip here is just unbelievably sharp. Um, you don't need a barbed hook with these. They're so good. Alrighty, so now I'm just going to start my thread as usual. Just get her all started up. It's actually a fairly simple fly to tie. Um, it, it, it can be a little challenging at first um, to get the proportions correct. Because um, the proportions... Um, especially getting those legs the right length. Now, there's two different ways, and I'll get into that when we tie the legs. There's definitely two different uh, schools of thought on how to tie these legs in. Um, but uh, we'll we'll see how it goes, and we'll go from there. So I just exposed a bit of that center stem of this uh, agate, or mick agate. Just get that in there, tie that down nicely, even get that last little piece down, because that's part of the center stem. Not too worried about, about underbody thickness there, you know, normally I would tie in all the way and keep the underbody the, uh, the same, but uh, in this case it doesn't really matter because this stuff is fluffy and you won't see it. So I'm going to stop about four to five hook eyes back roughly uh, just because that's where I want to start building my thorax so my abdomen sorry um, so every stroke back just want to make sure I keep this material back keep it stroke back right and if you have to twist this material twist it just to do what, what you want it to do um, it's pretty uh, in, uh, forgiving this material it uh, even if you get a bit of a twist in it, it does it does cooperate and come back. So I'm gonna get one more wrap in there. There's my 
body section, my back section of the body, all done. So four or five turns on top, four or five turns in front to create that little dam. Cut it off. Just a couple more just to make sure. Now you can take your your little brush, just give it a bit of a of a brush out. Now you can, if you'd like, cut some of that under under the hook there. Under sorry, between the, the in, in the gape, you could cut cut some of that a little flatter just to make it a little better. But it's really this when it this gets wet, this flattens out pretty good. So you don't really have to concern yourself too too much. So now I'm gonna take some of my pheasant. I'm gonna get about eight or ten strands of pheasant. And I'm going to tie this in in a way that, so this is the two different ways to tie in the legs. You can do the pheasant, do the shell back, cut it off, and then add legs on the side, which is has been done on um, this guy here. That's how I did this one, okay? Or you can tie it in so it's just long enough so when you pull that shell back, let's just, I'll show you what I mean. So I'd cut this off and then my shell back would go up and then my legs would then splay on either side and see how that's too long. So I would just shorten that, all right? Just shorten that up so my legs will be about that right length when I pull that over. So that's the way I'm gonna do it for this one. Just gonna crank that down, come forward with that shell back just to make sure it's all tightened in. Take my scissors, cut that off. Go back here, I'm gonna take some of my dubbing. I'm gonna get my wax, wax my thread because it is nano silk and nano silk candy slippery any of these these gsp type uh threads can be slippery so let's so make sure you treat it right wax your threads so you don't want a too tight of a dubbing nut, uh, loop here uh dubbing noodle sorry um, you do want this to be a bit buggy right scraggly so just come on up leave yourself you know a little bit of room at the eye Actually, I'm going to go back through there. I'm going to add a little bit more, just for a little bit more body bulk. Going through it like that is actually not bad because it'll it'll uh, act as a almost as a rib. Okay, so now I'm going to take all these and I'm going to shell back it, bring it forward as a shell back. Try to flatten them out. See how that looks. Give it a pull and an adjustment if you need to. Go in front, go on top. Then I'm going to take half of them, go off to one side, half go off to the other side. Use my finger and my forefinger and my thumb and just kind of force them back. Don't worry if you've got a little scra straggler there, you can always just pick that off or fold them back. So then, now if it's too much on the top, all you got to do is just kind of just give it a bit of a an adjustment. Don't put too many turns in. Now you can make it a bit of an adjustment. Work your way back a bit just so they splay out the way you want them to splay. And if there's a straggler like that guy, just pick it off. Just get rid of them, right? So that is a, about as long as I would make them. I would not make them any longer than that. So now I'm just gonna make sure I've got enough of a head there. I'm just gonna do a, a little whip finish right on the head. Nice and tight, do another second set. I like doing two sets of whip finishes myself on almost all my flies. And the reason I do that is because sometimes I forget to put uh, head cement on. 
and this way I know I'm protected. I've got at least a backup in case one gets pulled out, right? So now I'll push that down out of the way. I'll take my green felt pen, wherever the heck I put it, there it is. I really like these markers, guys. You guys can go out and pick them up at Michael's. Or a little guy like that on one end and more of a tip on the other end. And I just go in and I just give them a brush. Just give it a, just to make that head green. Um, then I'll take my golf resin and I'm just going to give it the slightest little blob right on top there. Don't want a big one. I do want to allow this to soak in just a little bit before I hit it. And I'll take my bodkin here and just, because I'll put it even right onto the head. Trying my best not. I can see how I'm lifting a little bit and getting it in between the fibers there. But I don't want to catch those legs too much if I can possibly help it. Just a little bit more because it's soaked in. Which I want. Just makes that more robust. And just give that a bit of a turn. And then smack it with the uh, UV light. And you see how much here. I'm going to actually turn this light off. Look how much that's, this material glows. It's just unbelievable how much this stuff glows. Turn this light back on. Just setting that uh, UV. And that's the finished light, guys. That's it. Uh, it, like I said, when this gets wet, this will this will uh, slick back, and this will thin out. Let's see if I can actually. I'm gonna get it wet. I'm just gonna use my some saliva. But obviously, it's not gonna be as. Oh, don't do that with a hen's hook. Ooh, that hurts the tongue. Um, it's not gonna be as slick back as it would in the water. But just so you can see how those legs kind of will slick back like that and that that material flattens out a bit right and you get that that dragonfly nymph profile so now the other thing you can do is just take your your velcro and just give that dubbing just a little bit of a of a pull out if you like just to give it a little bit again just that ever so little bit more bugginess and uh, that's it Alrighty, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that one. Uh, give that a shot. Um, I know um, there's other companies that make this kind of stuff. Zemperfly actually makes a really cool one too. Um, it's uh, it's a bit more olive and it doesn't have quite the uh, UV property that this one does, but it does slick back just like this. Um, and it's it's a really nice one as well. Um, but yeah, this, this, this material really, it, like I said, it just, it does it such a nice job of getting that profile, especially of like a gonfus. And like I said, if you wanted to make this a, just a little bit more darner like, you could just take this and just nip off some of this material here. And you just get that a little bit more slick, skinnier, darner type body, right? So there, right? And then when that gets wet, that'll all slick out. Alrighty. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give her a thumbs up. Um, if, you, if you've already subscribed, thank you very much. If you haven't, consider doing so. And uh, do me a favor, share my videos with all your friends. Um, once I hit 1,000 subscribers, um, I will be uh, giving away a copy of my books that I've written. I'm just going to actually switch over to the cameras here. Let me give it away a copy of the two books I wrote. Um, and a selection of the flies that I've tied on this channel. So, uh, yeah. Please uh, subscribe and uh, spread the word. Tie lines, everyone. See you in the next tying video.